This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. Peoples and cultures from all over the world and throughout history have produced their own unique origin story. The origin story of the Jews and mankind in general can be found in the biblical book of Genesis. While not everyone believes in the veracity of the Bible, billions of Jews, Christians and Muslims who hold the narrative dear to their own respective religions would have to disagree. According to Genesis, or as it is called in Hebrew, Bereshit, which literally means in the beginning, before creation, the earth was formless and empty, and darkness was over the surface of the deep. The book of Genesis then goes on to describe how God brought life to the earth, creating all manner of plants and animals, before finally designating the greatest showpiece of his creation, humanity itself. For those who interpret the scriptures literally, this was the actual beginning of Jewish history. Of course, the more skeptical and cynical among us would certainly beg to differ. At any rate, even though the book of Genesis offers up one of the most famous creation stories of all time, the creation of the book of Genesis itself can be traced back, not to the dawn of time, but rather just a few thousand years ago. It is believed to have been written by a man named Moses. Moses, in fact, is credited with writing the first five books of the Bible, Torah. It is believed that Moses compiled the Torah around 1445 BCE while the nation of Israel was making their exodus from Egypt. The book of Exodus is actually the book right after Genesis. Regardless of when it was written and regardless of whether anyone believes it or not, the book of Genesis attempts to tell the story of the beginning of Jewish history. Moses, or whoever may have chronicled the events, had to cast their mind backward in time to tell us what happened. After the general creation story, the book of Genesis follows a specific lineage of people, which ultimately leads up to the great biblical patriarch Abraham. It is Abraham who is identified as the founding father of Judaism as a religion. Abraham was from an ancient city in the Middle East called Ur. The city of Ur is located in modern-day Iraq near the city of Nasiriya. According to the narrative of Genesis, most of the people in this region were polytheists, meaning they believed in many gods. It is revealed to Abraham that there is only one God. From this revelation, he developed the first strains of the monotheistic religion that would eventually become Judaism. Ironically enough, it is said that Abraham's own father, Terah, made a living by making and selling stone idols. Regardless of his father's influence, Abraham would grow up to very much live by the motto of, It is not man who makes God, but God who makes man. Abraham, who no longer believed that new gods could be simply carved up in stone on demand, began revealing his newfound belief in one supreme deity to all who would listen to him. Along with this newfound monotheistic belief system, Abraham was given a mission to travel to the land of Canaan, modern-day Israel, Palestine. According to Genesis 12, 2-3, God told Abraham, I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you I will curse, and all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. It's certainly a pretty heady thing to tell a man that all peoples on earth will be blessed through him. But this covenant is said to have represented much more than just Abraham. Many theologians have come to interpret Abraham as being a symbolic double for the nation of Israel itself. At any rate, Abraham answered this divine summons and he took his family along with him, which, at that time, consisted of his wife, Sarah, and the son of his brother, Lot. All seemed to be well in the land of Canaan until a devastating famine struck. The famine caused Abraham to take his wife and his brother's son and venture south of Canaan into the land of Egypt. 
Abraham managed to bring quite a bit of wealth back with him, and for a time he and his family did quite well.